Hey everyone, this is JT with the solution to the second part of the Doge's Gambit puzzle. This one had a reward of 10,000 Doge coins. So congratulations to the person who was able to solve it. They messaged me and told me that they had spent about a month working on it. So that is a lot of patience and diligence. Good job and I'm glad it paid off. The market's been crazy and when I put the Doge coin in this puzzle it was probably worth around $50. I was not expecting Dogecoin to rise so much and it was fun watching the value of this one rise over the last couple months from 50 to 500 to 1000 and 5 or 6000 dollars when it was solved. This was one of the harder puzzles or most confusing just because so much is going on and I'm a little bit glad that it took took a while to be solved because just just to watch that price go up and congratulations again to the person who solved this wonderful job. So again, as in the solution to the prior one, this is a puzzle is a chessboard, an eight by eight grid, which is the same number of squares on a chessboard. Instead of using chess pieces, I use the Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Bombino logos, as well as the Spirograph symbol for the queen. Just as in the last one, we are going to look at all of the squares where the chess pieces can move, and that kind of splits the yellow, green, blue, and red squares into two sets, two of each that can be moved to by a chess piece and two of each that cannot be moved to with a chess piece. So in this puzzle, we are looking at the ones where the chess pieces can move to, whereas the previous one was where they could not be moved to. So let's get into that solution. So from the last video, we had colored in all of the squares where the chess pieces could move to with orange just to kind of block them out. So Dogecoin can move to this E as well as this B. So all these squares filled in with orange were the colored squares where a chess piece can move to. And the remaining ones were the ones that could not be reached by one of the chess pieces. And those went into the other solution. So for the Dogecoin solution, we are only looking at these squares filled in with orange. And let me, let's pull up the, here's, here's the solution. So first of all, order the frames by number of pink squares. So the order of the frames is determined by pink squares. This is the first frame in that solution because there's only one pink square. If you go through all the frames, you'll find one with two, with three, with four, etc. So that's the order of frames. Consider only the yellow, green, blue, and red squares that chess pieces can move to. So these are the ones filled in with orange. Now we take those squares and only look at the ones that are touching blue squares and the diagonal counts. So for example, this six is touching this blue square. This is, this is the crux of this puzzle. So this six is touching that blue square. This J is touching two. This E is touching three. All of these other ones are not. So we're just going to discard those for this puzzle. So in this case, we order the digits by number of blue squares touching. So after discarding these five that are not touching any blue squares, they're ones that are, we order those by the number that they are touching. So the first digit in this is going to be a six. Second digit's a capital J. Third digit's this E. So those are the first three digits because this is the frame with one pink square, making it the first. So let's move that down a bit. Here's the full solution here. Six, capital J, lowercase e. Those are the first three. We'll do another frame. So these are from the last puzzle too where I already filled in where the chess pieces can move to. So we're just looking at the orange squares. So we have, here's an L that's touching two blue squares. So that's going to be the second one. We have this capital R that's touching just one blue square. So that's going to be the first di digit. We have this, so this U doesn't touch anything. So that's not part of it. The second one's L that touches two. And then Y, capital Y that touches three. And some of, some of the frames had four digits. Some might may have had two. It doesn't, doesn't have to be the same number of digits per frame. This one looks like those are the only three. M doesn't touch anything. S doesn't touch anything. G doesn't touch anything. Same with A. And yeah, that's everything. So this frame also had three. 
Now this is RLY, so that we should have RLY in here. And based on the number of pink squares, I think it's 13. This is towards the end. And yeah, here it is. So there's the, the RLY string in the private key. So if you had gone through every frame and ordered them by pink squares, kind of did that calculation where you, you split the colored squares into the ones where chess pieces could go to or not, and then looked at the ones where they could go to, and then the number of blue squares touching them and put them in the correct order, you would have solved the, for this private key and got the solution. So congratulations again to the person who is able to solve this, and good effort by everyone else who put a significant amount of time in this. I know as the reward got bigger, it was probably more tempting to solve it, worked harder, and hopefully you guys will be able to solve a different one if you weren't able to solve this one. So congratulations again, and good luck on the other puzzles and future ones I'll be posting.